Hey everybody, welcome back to A Week in Geekdom, and today we're going to be taking a look at Dance in the Vampire Bund, Age of Scarlet Order, Volume 1. So stay tuned. <music> Welcome back to the channel, Geo here, and today we're going to be talking vampire manga goodness. Yeah, it's been a while since I've talked about monsters on this channel. I have to give a big shout out to the folks at Seven Seas Entertainment for making this review possible. They sent me a copy of A Dance in the Vampire Bund. Age of Scarlet Order Volume 1. The story is written by Nozumu Tamaki. So what exactly is Dance in the Vampire Bund? This book is a sequel to the Dance in the Vampire Bund series. I do believe those came out a while ago in uh, regular editions and like 2-in-1 Omnis or something to that effect. Uh, but yeah, it is a series that has been around for quite some time now. It deals with the rise of vampires and the character of, and I am probably going to butcher this name, Mina Tepes. Uh, she is the princess ruler of all vampires. She's accompanied by her werewolf companion Akira. And in the original series, if I remember correctly from what I read online, uh, they hope to establish a society, a uh, kingdom of sorts or a city, uh, a bund, hence the title, where vampire society can live off uh, away from humanity and all that stuff. And of course you've got the eternal struggle between vampiric forces and humans and all that stuff. She wants peace and not a lot of people see it that way so there is, there's going to be conflict involved. There's also like this uh, evil godlike ruler that uh, appears and they fight and yeah you know standard standard uh, vampire procedure so that was the original series every single character in this uh, vampire series uh, learns that uh, supposedly the vampire queen is dead so at the start of this current manga, Age of Scarlet Order, the sequel, uh, vampires are being hunted all across America, and their remaining hope is about this rumor that there's this escape plan that's being put out, and uh, Mina Tepes is summoning all the vampires to uh, go to the west coast, and they're going to board this secret navy uh, ship, uh, or just a regular ship. <laughs> And uh, they're going to escape for the Bund, for this, uh, you know, uh, society and stuff. And uh, the problem is, you know, all these vampires are running across America, but the Queen is dead. So when you start the series, you're following a couple characters that are facilitating the move for this Muslim family that's trying to escape with their newborn son. I think it was the son. Newborn baby. I should say newborn baby instead. And uh, the start of the series is pretty interesting. It uh, There's this tension that is very reminiscent of things we've seen in the past in modern situations and unfortunate uh, cases of uh, discrimination and racism and it's done in a not so tactful manner it's very in your face which I know for some people that uh, I, I really don't mind but I know for some people it's gonna be a, uh, a bit of a bother and yeah it can be a little bit on the nose but I just found it uh, really uh, hilarious uh, the comparisons between a certain type of demographic and group and you know pairing it up with uh, them uh, arguing that you know vampires they're they're uh, uh, from hell and they gotta get extinguished and all that stuff and naturally you know 
vampires, they uh, kill humans, right? But in this series, there's more to that. They're not simply, um, they're not simple tropey monsters that they're out for blood on every single occasion. You see and you learn that these are humans who have been turned into uh, these legendary creatures uh, of folklore and they have relationships and problems just as the rest of humanity so they shouldn't be hated on but um, obviously you know you're gonna have conflicts on both sides it's not as simple as black and white yada yada but at the start of the series I found it really interesting and it really drove the tension of this um, pair of mother and daughter as they're trying to escort this family across America, trying to evade the, uh, the America church order thing, which is a uh, religious uh, fanatic group of people that uh, they want to exterminate all vampires and all that stuff. Uh, so that part I really liked. If the story could have... Um, because I had no idea, like I said, I, I, I had not read the original source material, the first series, I should say. If the series could have kept that momentum throughout the whole volume, it would have been a, an awesome read. I really liked it. I, I haven't said anything yet, but I really did enjoy the, what I read. It's a very simple, fast-paced, and interesting read, and I do like the fact that even though you've not, um, or in my case, I haven't read the original series, the first series, I wasn't lost. I still understood what was happening, and I don't know if it's because of clever writing or if it's um, so used to the uh, these types of stories where you can predict where uh, the plot is going. I love the idea of having this super uh, minuscule group of people trying to escape, uh, and it really does represent the struggle of uh, minorities in the face of adversity and racism and all that stuff that you know they face in today's climate in today's world so it is relevant also i like that it's in the future and by future i mean september 2020 one of the dates thrown around so yeah since the story set the original set in tokyo because they want to build the bund or the society secret society off the coast of Japan, if I remember correctly. Part of what I liked is that there's this political payoff. Uh, the character of um, Minas Tepes and her family, they got a lot of cash, so they're paying off uh, nas the national debt so as to gain favor and uh, ease the tension between the two species, I guess. So the transition isn't as rough as, hey, we're vampires, we're settling in here. Uh, I don't care what you think. So it's a lot smoother than that. With this series, however, uh, you get the other side of the coin where you are faced with um, radicals and extremist views and the anti-vampire sentiment is spreading across the world because uh, the queen is dead and um, everything's in disarray and chaos. Uh, a couple characters get introduced in Japan that I had no idea who the heck they were. Uh, as you read, you start uh, getting to know them and you understand. For the most part, uh, Nozomi does a good job of writing these characters. I really liked, like I said at the beginning, the first half of the book where the tension is on these characters making this uh, pilgrimage of sorts. I thought that was really uh, intense and if the whole series could have been like that, that would have been even cooler to me. Uh, later on, it does go into more... Uh, manga anime trope things about vampires if you know what i mean so i thought that was pretty interesting the art is pretty easy to follow especially the action scenes they're smooth and you're not gonna get lost because sometimes you know uh, with action manga uh, they tend to be a little bit too hectic and you get lost in the shuffle so uh overall i thought it was a clean looking series and a very cool way to sort of reinvent the wheel and present a vampire story that's unlike other things we've seen in the past. Even with the original series, I like the whole idea of involving politics with a radicalization of a group of a minority, in this case vampires, and wanting truce and peace 
Obviously, it's not going to be as simple as that. There's going to be conflicts, and that is carried over into this title, which I believe is uh, like a couple months after the original title. Somebody correct me on that if I'm wrong. Uh, but I do like that, and there's talks about Parliament and, uh, you know, the political side of things of how these groups are not as accepting or should they be as accepting of vampires wanting to isolate themselves, I guess, uh, and live uh, away from humans and still retain uh, an autonomous recognition of uh nationality of sorts uh it's interesting there's meat in there to get a hold of and do a really interesting uh thing with it however at the end of the book we do go into the lore of the series uh with um a certain character's past that i don't want to reveal because it's a spoiler for the book uh we go into this character's origin and Again, I didn't know what was happening, but you figure it out as you're reading, and it's not that complicated. You still have fun. You still uh, have a good time reading the story. And I also want to check out the original series, so I know about uh, the origin of the plot and seeing uh, like uh, Mina and Akira and all these characters, uh, what their deal was when the story first began. But overall, a very fun uh, read. Uh, some of the images invoke certain aspects of society that I wish were eradicated and it goes into very scary territory with, uh, you know, extremism and, and racism and all that stuff. <clears throat> but overall, it's a fun uh, vampire story that I do recommend. Have you read Dance in the Vampire Bund? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you're starting this new book let me know what you thought of the transition between the two stories and how are you liking this new series age of scarlet order very interested in finding out also if you haven't read it and you want to recommend me some vampire books more than happy to uh, uh take those suggestions <laughs> thank you everybody for tuning in thank you to seven seas entertainment for making this video possible uh they were gracious enough to send me a copy to read and review for you guys so i'm very excited about that thank you as always you can follow me on your favorite social media platform facebook twitter instagram all that fun stuff share like comment subscribe here on youtube hit the little bell icon so you know when new videos pop up thank you everybody for being a part of this channel i've got to go i will catch all of you on our next video Thank you.